Okay, hi there, this is Toby. We're continuing on uh, our series for uh, following along with the LLVM tutorial from LLVM.org. So, uh, we're at the end of chapter three. Um, I, I had a kind of a tough debugging session um, figuring out the, the one line that I was missing from my code in order to make everything work, in particular, the, the, the instantiation of the module. Uh, I didn't have this line and that broke everything. It, it, it made the program sick fault and I had a bit of a hunt figuring that out, but we got that to work now. So we have a program now that has this REPL where you can type in lines of code in the Kaleidoscope language and then it'll translate it into LLVM IR. Um, so, for example, the, the Kaleidoscope uh, program 1 plus 1 gets translated this to this program in LLVM IR. You might notice that, first of all, the it's a it defines a function which is unnamed. Well, it, it's actually named uh, at zero. Um, so, so we, we had the parser automatically wrap the top level of the program inside a function, which is why we got this function construct. And then the, a con function construct that is parsed, or a function construct in the AST gets translated to a function construct in LLVM IR. So that's why we see a function in LLVM right now. Um, the LLVM, we, we had to create a block construct in LLVM IR, and we had to give that block a name. We named it entry, and that's why we see entry colon here. And then this is a return statement construct, a ret construct. This is a double type construct. And this two literal is, you can see that LLVM decided to go ahead and add these two constants together automatically instead of having the program itself do that calculation because they're constants anyway. Um, this makes sense because it, uh, the computer would execute it faster if you didn't have to do a calculation in the first place. Just experiment with this repo a little bit and do some other um, instructions. Um, we'll, we'll also follow along with the tutorial here a little bit. So. You can see that, yeah, it, it kind of gave the same kind of example. 4 plus pi, it sort of magically added them together into this 9 constant. And I think this automatic uh, calculation of constants, if, if like both sides of your uh, plus operator are constants, you can just do that calculation at compile time. And I believe that is called... Is that called constant propagation? Is that what that's called? Not sure, but maybe that's what constant propagation means. It's one of the compiler optimizations that LLVM does off the bat for you. Um, let's see. Uh, next example they showed is that, which is very interesting. I'm gonna do my own version Let's define a distance formula, one of my favorite examples, x1, y1, x2, y2. Um, oh, we don't have square root, shoot. <laughs> uh, we don't have square root, so we can't, to we'll just sort of fake it then. Uh, so x1 minus x2 times x1 minus x2 plus y1 minus y2 times y1 <laughs> minus y2. This is the square of the distance. Okay, so if I did this with a semicolon, I get this uh, LLVM IR program. Wow, that's impressive. So we have defined a function called at dist in the LLVM language. Um, it takes four parameters, 
all of them are doubles. Uh, Kaleidoscope only has doubles. Um, we're gonna let's see if it did the order of precedence correctly, because um, it's supposed to first do this and then do this and then multiply them together, and then do this, do this, multiply them together, and then add them together, right? So first it uh, subtracts x1 and x2. That is correct. And then it uh, subtracts x1 and x2 again. <laughs> that, that's true. It did that. Uh, and the first value, the first result goes into t sub temp 1, and the second one goes into sub temp 2. And then we're going to multiply them together. That's, that's correct. It goes into mol temp. And then we're going to do two subtractions again, this time y1 and y2. That's correct. And then we're going to take those two results and multiply them together. That's right. And then finally, we add together the result of that plus that. So the two multipli results of the two multiplications get added together. So that looks correct to me. And uh, that, that is very cool. Now let's look at another example. Uh, so if you define a bar function, which in turn calls a foo and a bar function, it's recursive. Um, okay, sure. I'm just going to copy this chunk. Let's see what it does. Unknown function reference. Uh, the foo, I think it's the foo function that is unknown. Note that this function will take a long time to execute if you call it. In the future, we'll add condition control flow to actually make recursion useful. Uh, we could define foo, and then that would work. So let's define foo. Did he define foo? Oh, did he, he defined foo as this. So let's define foo. Um, and then now we can define the other thing, this the bar. OK, yeah. That works. Uh, so the bar, it's gonna call. There's this call instruction in LLVM IR. We're calling foo with the double that's coming from this percent a parameter. Apparently, parameters uh, it prefix with a percent sign in this language, um, and then this is a constant of four. Okay. So this stuff looks like it works. We also have the x turn. So I was saying, oh, I don't know, x turn. Uh, okay, sine of x is an x turn, and then it declares that. It just declares it when you do an x turn. Okay. Um, and if you after you declare it as an x turn you call it, then it ends up being a call to that function, okay? What did I, I did sign, so 1.4, 1.5, yep, it ends up being the call to that function, great. Um, yeah, some other examples, oh, so this is all of the examples that he showed. When you quit the current demo by control Ding or whatever, it dumps out the IR for the entire module generated. Here you can see the big picture. Oh, I don't think I have the line of code that does that, but whatever. Uh, but he's saying that in their code, they have this line here that dumps all of the code for the module. Let's put that in ours. Okay, I'll recompile the code. Oh, I just killed my terminal for some reason. I did not mean to do that. Uh, LLVM first line, okay. All right, let's rebuild the sky with this extra line that prints out the contents of the whole module. Uh, and perhaps we will do something like, I don't know.
Okay. It compiled. Run it. I'll do an extern maybe. I'll define a function add that has x and y together. Sure. And now I x out of the program, then it prints um, all of the code at the end. Okay. Great. So um, this is very cool. Very exciting stuff. Uh, I, f I definitely feel like I have a handle on how to work with LLVM. I'm going to cut this video here. Uh, and in the next one, we're going to move on to the next chapter, which is about adding JIT and optimizer support.